I expect to pass through life but once. If, therefore, there be any kindness I can show, or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now, and not defer or neglect it, as I shall not pass this way again. William Penn Let me first begin by saying, I am not nationalistic or have any feelings of patriotism. I consider my geographical birth location nothing more but an accident. I identify myself with the human race and the planet we live on. Does this mean that I am naive about the systems we live in and are a part of? No. I acknowledge humanity's ugliness and its beauty. I acknowledge our natural connections that we have with each other and also our human created divisions and fragmentations. I also acknowledge our socially and environmentally induced behaviors. Oh, our behaviors. Have you ever questioned where they come from? Or better yet, have you ever asked yourself, why am I the way that I am? Have you ever asked yourself, why do I talk like this? Why do I think like this? Why do I feel like this? Have you ever questioned how your mind came into being right now? Have you ever asked yourself how much of my mind is truly my own and not some imitation of another, a regurgitation of another person's ideas? How much of me is me and how much of me is a secondhand person? Have we ever peeled back the layers of our minds and watched the faces and events that have influenced who we are, the faces of society, the faces of lovers, family, friends, and enemies all fly through us. And if we are lucky, if we are lucky, we might ask a very important question to ourselves. Do I form my own ideas? Or do I wait for a similar minded person on the radio or on the TV or here on YouTube to say something that I will agree with? Something that I have always agreed with in relation to how I was brought up? how I was educated, how I was influenced. One cannot answer these questions without being completely honest with themselves. You cannot question how you think if you continue to look at yourself through a single perspective. One has to empty their mind from identifying themselves with a political party, with a system, with a faction, with an idea or belief to truly understand themselves and others. This is what it means to be a free thinker to not allow one's mind to be held down by a narrow perspective, to not be fragmented by life, but to feel all of life around you. I am not talking about one's mind is only left with knowledge. I am talking about that one's mind is left with the freedom to search for knowledge. And this freedom has no bias. It has no agenda. It has no loyalty other than to itself. This freedom allows one to stare at the bare nakedness that we call a soul, what we call the human mind. A person who sees problems in black and white, red versus blue, liberal versus conservative, Republican versus Democrat, is a person with a two-dimensional mind, a dull mind, a divided mind. A person who thinks like this will always look at social conflict as me versus you instead of with more intelligence as us versus the problem. These individuals with their divided minds will show their fragmented thinking early. They will choose a side and then make every attempt to demonize and label their opponents. They will have poor communication skills. They will be conceited, arrogant, rude, sarcastic, but worst of all, they will generalize others that do not think like them. It's kind of sad, really. These individuals do not help to solve humanity's problems. They create more of them. But you see, I do not hate these individuals because I understand them. I understand that we have been educated to use knowledge as a weapon against each other instead of using it as a tool of enlightenment to understand each other. The human mirror inside us has been replaced with a television screen a computer monitor. We are looking outside to fulfill ourselves inside. 
We are still waiting for that talking head to come on screen and tell us our opinions. Are we going to let them tell us why the world is the way it is? Is this talking head going to tell you why society values vanity over love? Why we value greed? Why there is gluttony, corruption, confusion, fear, war, hate? Or are we going to turn it off and start learning about ourselves? When we no longer seek authority over others, when we no longer crave power and prestige, when we end conceit and arrogance in our minds, humility comes into being. When this begins, one understands what it means to be humble, what it means to learn from another and not react on them with raw emotion. Patience no longer feels forced, but it comes freely with learnt understanding.